Hello and welcome to Jimbo's Gaming, I am Scop, and in a previous video I showed off how to connect two GameCubes together to play 8 player Mario Kart Double Dash by using this, or these should I say. This is a GameCube broadband adapter, a Doll 015. Now these things cost a pretty penny these days, they go upwards of €150 pounds each. So it's a bit of an extravagant expense when it's something you're probably only going to play once, maybe twice a year if you are lucky. Thankfully, the GameCube homebrew scene has come to the rescue. WebHDX released the ETH2GC, which combines a basic Ethernet controller, often used with Arduino projects, with a custom PCB which connects to the GameCube's SP2 slot on the underneath of the console. Unfortunately, I already use my SP2 slot for the SP2 SD card adapter, so that wasn't ever suitable for my use case. But thankfully, someone has come along and made another version. So this is the ETH2GC card adapter. It combines the same Ethernet controller, but uses the PCB for a GameCube memory card. So as you can see, this side is a GameCube memory card as such, and the other side is an Ethernet port. Now this does come with a slight cravat in the fact that it won't run with a stock GameCube and the stock version of Mario Kart. You need to be using Swiss. Right, and if, if you've got a GameCube and you don't use Swiss, I highly recommend you do. Uh, I'm not going to go into it today, but basically Swiss is a homebrew launcher. It is the Swiss army knife of GameCube homebrew launchers. So I'm going to shut up now and give this thing a test drive. So we are connecting two GameCubes together, so all we need is a crossover cable. As such. So the black GameCube on the left is a stock GameCube just running with a official broadband adapter and a disc copy of Mario Kart and yep and on the right my silver GameCube is running Swiss and we'll just set them both to LAN mode and it should take less than less than 30 seconds to get them both connected all right I'll revise that let's say less than a minute so the stock GameCube is ready and now, the Swiss GameCube is ready. Look at how fat I am. Took that in, mate. Took it in. Come on, find each other. There we go. Two GameCubes connected. Press start. We're just going to show it off using one player on each screen, but this will work for four players on this screen and four players on this screen. And there we go. A very cheap way to add a networking device to your GameCube. Absolutely amazing. But now, what if you were to take it bigger? Let's make it bigger. Right, I'm going to need more stuff. So to expand this further, you're going to need to ditch the crossover cable and you'll need to use a router. Now, this is an old Fritz box. For anyone who lives in Germany, you probably have at least three of these knocking about in your house somewhere. And just any old router will do, as long as it's running DHCP and has enough ports for the number of GameCubes that you want to connect. So, let's set this up. Take these out. So this is three GameCubes networked together via a router, two official GameCube broadband adapters, and one unofficial running Swiss through the memory card slot. So, and as you can see, uh, before the time runs out, so there we go, proof of concept complete. We've got the official Brahma adapter, we've got Silver Steel's memory card Brahma adapter, and yet another official Brahma adapter. Now, like I mentioned, I bought this from Amazon for $20 Euro pounds, and unfortunately, the 3D print quality isn't great. Uh, it didn't quite fit in my GameCube, and I was worried that I was going to damage the port in my GameCube. So, thankfully, I have a friend who has a quality 3D printer, and he, print uh, and he printed me out a fresh one, which fits absolutely perfectly and is just overall of much higher quality. So you probably it probably would be better if you went down the building it yourself route. And while I had access to a 3D printer, I printed out another one of Silver Steel's projects. And this, this is the SP1 ETH, which better mimics the original broadband adapter and fits in the same slot. It uses the same controller as the memory card adapter and the ETH2GC. Uh, I just need to get a board printed, which would let me add yet another GameCube into the mix, which will then finally let me have 16-player Mario Kart 
at a fraction of the cost that it would cost me to buy official broadband adapters. So like I say, four is the minimum you need to get 16 player Mario Kart. That is two people per cart, eight carts, and four TVs, two carts per TV. I hope that makes sense. You can expand that to eight GameCubes, but I've already got four GameCubes in my house. I don't need another four. If I did want to expand it further in future, then, you know, I've always got the Wii U with Nintendo don't. And also I've got Steam Deck with Dolphin and I've got PCs as well, which can run Dolphin. So, you know, that's good enough for me. You know, having four is, is plenty enough. And also at a fraction of the cost is, these GameCube broadband adapters, like I say, will set you back 150 each. The unofficial ones, like this, 15, around 15 dollar euro pounds. So a tenth of the cost, like perfect. So I just want to quickly shout out everyone involved. Obviously Silver Steel, thank you very much for designing both this and the ETH 1, 2, the, the SP1 to ETH. Too many, too many letters. And to everyone else involved, so, you know, WebHDX, Extremes, uh, Emo Kidigd, and, you know, everyone just involved in the GameCube homebrew community, you are doing us all a great service. We appreciate you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for making Swiss. I'm already talked too much, so... Bye! <laughs>